What you are looking at is a strange and fascinating landscape which would make for the perfect setting of a science fiction alien world visiting episode. These strange alternating layered rock formations are informally referred to as beehives as many of them have the somewhat circular shape expected of a beehive. Some of these features tower as much as 240 meters or 790 feet above the surrounding landscape and have an interesting origin. As these features, which are referred to as the Bungal Bungles, have an origin which is both geological and biological. As, in a manner of speaking, sections of the Bungal Bungal beehives are in fact alive. The Bungal Bungal range is located in the middle of an isolated portion of Western Australia, where it is 51 kilometers south southeast of the small town of Wormun. Here, in the massive nearly 2400 square kilometer Purnolulu National Park, are a series of stark contrast sedimentary rock layers which include abrupt changes in topography, steep ravines, thousands of faults and fractures which dominate the landscape, and even an approximately 340 million year old and 7.5 kilometer wide impact crater which, although heavily eroded, its outline is still quite prominent today. Yet, the sandstones which underlie this impact crater, which would go on to form the Bungal Bungal range, began their formation approximately 20 million years earlier. At the time, in the late Devonian period, although Australia was located closer to the South Pole than it is today, the average temperature was still quite warm as the region had a subtropical climate. In this age of fishes, when fishes were the dominant life forms on the planet, forests had only recently colonized what would become Western Australia. And in this landscape, there was a large meandering river which, for the most part, flowed at a low speed, transporting sand downslope from higher terrain which existed to the east. On the edges of this meandering river were a series of terraces which rose above a broad floodplain. As this riverbed existed for the majority of its lifespan, it deposited thick layers of sand interwoven with occasional cobbles and boulders which were rich in iron. Thus, as this river over time shifted its position, large swaths of land were covered in what would eventually become the orange-colored sandstone. However, this floodplain also experienced infrequent but large-scale floods. These large floods would inundate the entire floodplain and riverbed with large amounts of clay before going back to normal water levels. This clay-enriched layer did not have a discernibly different coloration than the other sand, but would form a different layer. This process subsequently repeated for tens of millions of years, perhaps as many as 50 million years, causing several hundred meters thick of alternating layers of iron and clay enriched sand to be deposited. Eventually, the river either moved elsewhere or disappeared altogether. These layers of sand would then be compacted together to form sandstone. Over time, the sandstone which was only loosely compacted together began to be preferentially eroded in some sections, creating valleys and hills. These features would only become more prominent as time progressed, eventually leading to the formation of the modern beehives of the Bungal Bungles. Once exposed to air, when rainwater seeped into the two differing layers, it caused different effects. The sandstone layers enriched in iron rusted, turning an orange color, but only on the surface of exposed rock. Meanwhile, the clay enriched sandstone layers became host to colonies of cyanobacteria as water more easily permeated into this layer. Due to the presence of the cyanobacteria, the surface of these layers would eventually turn a gray coloration as this represented a sort of biological crust. And when sections of this crust fall off, lighter colored segments of rock become exposed for all to see. As a final note, if you do decide to visit this national park, please stay on marked trails and roads only. The cyanobacteria crust and sandstone as a whole are surprisingly fragile and can be destroyed by simply walking on them. Thanks for watching. If you would like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, I would like to thank this channel's patrons on Patreon and channel members on YouTube.